Are you tired of the disconnects with your MLM2 Pro? Had a group of friends over and just spent the whole night messing with it, frustrated, thinking to yourself, why am I even wasting my time? Today, I want to talk about the connection, the local network connection, and how local Wi-Fi is affecting your experience with the MLM2 Pro. First, let's take a look at, you know, what is Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi signal strength. You know, this is an article that helped me kind of think about things a little bit differently. Wi-Fi is essentially a radio signal. So we're talking about radio waves and the interference around us is affecting our experience, you know, tremendously, honestly. And if we look about, you know, how Wi-Fi signals work, essentially your Wi-Fi signals are going to go out in different bandwidths. We've got 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Some people have the 6E and on each bandwidth, you've got channel. So you, uh, your Wi-Fi band is look at that as the road and the channels are the lanes is how they describe them in this article. And I'll link it below in the description. It is a pretty good quick read, but amongst those channels, you're going to have congestion from your neighbors. I live in sort of a suburban area where I've got neighbors all around me, front, backside, everywhere. And the congestion is, you know, worse than I thought. I mean, one of my neighbors has a dog fence that affects it. Uh, the next neighbor over has got a high powered Wi-Fi that affects it. I've got things that I didn't even realize that, that are putting out Bluetooth signal. Um, and as we get going here, I'll show you a program where you can kind of check for that. How do we measure Wi-Fi strength? You'll see later in the video here, as I show you Wi-Fi, we're going to use decibel Watts. That's how the apps that I have for the Android tablet I have, uh, work to measure this. Um, and when you're talking decibel watts, the closer we get to zero, the stronger the strength. So a, a larger negative number, negative 100, is a worse signal than a negative 30, which they would some would consider near perfect as signal. This RSSI, this is a signal strength indicator. You see it at your cell phone. You'll see it on the Rapsodo in practice mode. Basically, that's the manufacturer's you know determination of what a good strength is and a bad strength is. You know they could set their their high at a certain end and their low at a different end. Um, what is a good signal strength? As we measure today, you'll see negative 30 is a near perfect. Um, you are probably right next to the unit, whereas negative 90 is unusable. So there's nothing, you, you basically can't get it. Uh, they say around negative 70 to negative 55 or so is a good signal, um, where excellence is going to be close to negative 30. Again, as we look later in the video, I'll show you what that looks like. There are some ways to check signal strength on your Mac, on your iPhone, on an Android device. And the one I'm going to use today is actually on an Android device. We'll use Wi-Fi Analyzer. There's also Wi-Fi Man. That's the other one I'm going to use. You can heat map. I did heat map my house to figure out where my Wi-Fi puck should be. And that did change where I have one currently. And I'll show you that. And then how do we optimize your Wi-Fi signal strength? Um, things like having a managed router where you can choose channels that aren't congested help and being able to choose whether you're using five or six or 2.4 gigahertz, um, that helps as well. As we scroll down, five gigahertz is the recommended band. It's got more channels. It's got less congestion. It is faster in some circumstances, especially when you're in close range or close proximity. It doesn't have as much reach as 2.4, as you'll see in this image here. So as you go to a five gigahertz to get off a congested channel, uh, you do also need to be closer to the unit. Talks about updating firmware. That's always a, a good thing to do. And then obstacles, you know, things that are in the way, concrete, masonry, um, brick faced, things like that. Uh, glass uh, can, can affect it. And then the other thing it, it talks about is repositioning your access points, which I actually ended up doing. Um, and I'll show you that here later in the video. Here's the check your Wi-Fi channel plan. Um, basically 2.4, there's three uh, channels that don't overlap. You get one, six and 11. And on the five gigahertz, there's 25 that don't overlap. The universal ones that are being used, which I find the case here at home as well, are the 36 to 48 and the 149 to 165. Um, these analyzer apps will break down how you can check to see what is overlapping. And what I found is I actually have quite a bit of co-channel interference from my neighbors on the 2.4. And I have a lot of adjacent channel interference um, on my network as well. 
which is basically channels that sort of overlap and just cause, you know, think of it as like static uh, sound or noise um, interrupting the signal between devices. So this is what we're going to look into. And I want to just take my home environment and let's look at it really quick. And let's talk about the things that might affect mine. In the top right here, I've got the tablet. This is my tablet over here on the wall. And we'll go grab that. You can see that I have it down here by my unit, almost an inch away. And right now I've got it hooked up to the Rapsodo. We are in local network mode. And I'm just going to take this and we're going to open up the Wi-Fi Man app. Actually, we'll start with... Uh, the Wi-Fi Analyzer app. So if we go into the Wi-Fi Analyzer app, it'll show you here that you've got your different access points and what your signal strength is. I am negative 40 decibel signal strength and it's showing that on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz channel to this access point right here. This is the one, um, the Google one that I moved. I always told you guys it was in my room. Technically it was on the other side of this wall about eight inches. And I considered that in my room. I thought that was right here. But what I noticed was I go from a negative 42 decibel strength signal to when I put it on the other side of that wall, I dropped to almost a negative 60. And so I don't know if that's because of the way I've soundproofed my wall or just the fact that these don't have that high of an output, but I lost, you know, 20% of my signal just by having it on the other side of that wall. So I ended up moving it into this room. Um, but yeah, negative 40. It's a good strength, so I'm connected very well to the to the hotspot there, or to the Wi-Fi. And now if we go over to the um, Wi-Fi Man app, I can do things like we can look at signal strength. So if you look, there's a signal strength plot. It's saying negative 35 decibels. And what you'll notice as I get closer to the unit, we're down to negative 30. If I almost touch it, we're at negative 27, negative 28. 24 and where I keep my unit all the time down here by the Rapsodo on the wall you can see we are at negative 43 and so that's a good strength when I have my Wi-Fi unit on the other side of the wall and I did the same test my signal strength was at negative 59 to negative 65 which not great um, I'm assuming my Rapsodo is getting the same signal strength and reception. And if I go back to the other app here and we just check, sorry, if I go back to the Wi-Fi man analyzer and I look at this, here's if you have the ability to choose your channels where it would tell you. So on the 2.4 channels, one, two, and three are very congested. If I go to the five gigahertz, my 149 to 161 is congested. My 36 to 40 is congested. If I go to the six gigahertz, there's no congestion at all. I don't have, there's none, it's not picking up anything. So if I had a six gigahertz route, it would do me some real good around here right now. But let's go back to the Wi-Fi man. And here's what I wanna do. Now what I wanna do is do a test where we direct connect to the unit. So let's direct connect quick. Okay, so now we are direct connected to the unit and I have forgotten the local area network connections. And we're gonna go back to the Wi-Fi Man app and let's just take a look here. So as far as signal strength, I have a negative 66 decibel signal strength from right now what it would be the tablet to the Rapsodo. And as I come down here and we go next to it, where it would sit normally as we play golf, my direct connection signal strength jumps all the way up to, I think it's negative 51, negative 49, negative 51, but we're about the negative 50 space. And that's a great connection. But if I take the unit and I'm direct connected and we start to move over to here, what you're going to find is I'm down to negative 70, negative 69. Let's say we set it over here on my table. We're at negative 82, 84. This is an unusable connection. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it kicks me off of the unit. Um, and that's just about 10 feet from the device. 
So now as I go back to it and get close again, we're negative 70. It's starting to pick up a negative 60. I can see it being a decent connection. And again, as we get down and say we hold it right next to the unit, like as if it were sitting on the stand, just as RepSoto has designed it for, um, it's got a negative 52, negative 46, which is excellent. So I think what we're seeing here is I always thought about how I've got good Wi-Fi signal in my house, but what I didn't necessarily think about was how strong is the radio in the MLM2 Pro? And when I direct connect and run this Wi-Fi test, what I think I'm getting is the understanding that the signal coming out of that unit isn't quite as strong as it needs to be. So let's walk my tablet over to where my local network connection is, where my hotspot is. My signal strength, where it's, when it's right next to my hotspot to the Rapsodo is negative 72, negative 74, negative 66. So the best that I'm really gonna do communicating back and forth from the Rapsodo to my Wi-Fi spot when I hook up through the local network connection is gonna be negative 66. Now imagine if my Wi-Fi puck was over here. My Wi-Fi puck's over here. The connection to my Rapsodo device is negative 82. There's no way that the Rapsodo can talk to a Wi-Fi puck that's 10 feet away. What I think we're finding out is, or what I think I've discovered with this, at least for me, is that it's not my local network connection. It's not my home Wi-Fi that's bad. It's the setup of having the MLM2 Pro too far away and obstructed from my home Wi-Fi. The other thing you've got is when these are in a mesh network mode, this, this node needs to talk to the next node, needs to talk to the next node that's then hooked you know, to your main network, especially if it's trying to get to the internet. And what I did with mine was I wired a switch in my basement from, so I've got my fiber coming in, it splits off into my very first Google puck. From there, I have it go into a network switch, just a five port unmanaged network switch. And I ran ethernet cords from that network switch to each one of my Wi-Fi pucks. Now my Wi-Fi extenders or pucks don't have to talk to each other. They actually go through a hardwired cord back to the main Google puck for the internet. These two things have made my local network connection usable with the MLM2 Pro. One, getting the Wi-Fi puck on the wall within about six feet of the MLM2, and two, hardwiring it back to the main hub that it connects to. So there you have it. I don't know if any of that's scientific or any of that is necessarily shows you or tells any truth to how network connections work with this device. But I think what I've discovered is the MLM2 Pro is made to have, and if you read the user manual, your device sitting on the stand of the unit. And my guess is that to save power, both on the MLM2's mobile battery, and as well as the thought when you design it, hey, why would we need to make this thing any more powerful than to reach the device sitting on the stand right there? You've got a weak Wi-Fi radio inside the MLM2 Pro. And so while you may have a strong Wi-Fi signal coming out of your Wi-Fi hotspot, the communication back through the Wi-Fi network and to your mobile device is weak coming off the MLM2 Pro. This could be to reduce interference with the you know, Doppler. It could be to reduce uh, consumption of power. Uh, it may just be an, over, an oversight or an over, you know, overlook that they made when they put that radio in there. But without Rapsodo confirming anything, I don't know if this is actually true. This is just a quick sort of test in my environment using a Wi-Fi analyzer tool, trying to figure out why is my device having so much issues on the local network connection side of things. I hope this video helped. If you guys understand this a little bit better than I do or know more about the network uh, connection settings or any of the apps I used, please comment below on the video. 
this is just supposed to be something helpful and informative about the MLM2 Pro and its network connection. I think if you get the network connection right, the device can be used with your local network and enjoyed thoroughly. But when you've got a weak signal between your MLM2 Pro and your local network spot, you're going to spend the whole night trying to figure out why won't this thing connect. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.